Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the Auto L8, not L9, but anyway, they have a pretty similar exterior design. We hardly find any difference of them. It's just smaller on its size, which has been classified as large, mid-size, 60s family SUV. In fact, L8 is the new generation of the Li one, but it comes with totally new design language pretty similar with its flagship SUV L9. If you guys are interested with L9, you can check my previous videos. The face here, pretty slick design, you've got some crisp lines on the hood part here. And uh, of course, we've got these uninterrupted, nearly two meters lighting up three quarters over the front face here. If you guys watch from this part, it brings up some kind of floating fittings. That's quite futuristic and the technical fittings part here. We've also got the aging leg grow and the vents help to cool the brakes and the batteries and the motors. Yeah, this car has 1.5 turbo four cylinder engine only for generating the electricity and the save to the battery. By talking about the uh, battery part, it is equipped a 42.8 kilowatt hour battery can with the WLTC range 175 kilometers. The fuel tank is the same as the Li Auto L9, 65 liters. So the total WLTC range could reach 1,100 kilometers. By talking about the autonomous driving hardware, it is a huge improvement if we compare with the Li Auto 1. And also, it's the, a very distinctive difference if we compare with the Li Auto L9. It's the LiDAR sensor. There was two versions of the L8, which are L8 Pro and L8 Max. For the Pro version, there is no LiDAR sensor on the top. The Pro version is equipped with one 8 megapixel camera, high definition camera, and nine 2 megapixel cameras all around the car, and one millimeter wave radar sensors, and 12 ultrasonic radar sensors all around the car. But there is no LiDAR sensor on the top. But for the Max version, it's pretty much the same amount of the hardware with the Auto L9. For the autonomous driving chips, the Pro version, uh, you've got uh, Horizon Robotics Journey 5 chip. Uh, in total, 128 top screen computing capacities of the Pro version, which could achieve the Highway NOA, which means the automatic navigation on highway. The Max version is equipped uh, uh, two NVIDIA or RX chips in total 508 top computing capacities. Theoretically, with the LiDAR sensors and all the high definition cameras, this one could achieve more autonomous driving features uh, like level 4, including highway or city autonomous driving. With the future OTA upgrades, the wheels here today we got 21 inch wheels, so that's the matching tires. But the standard one came with 20 inch wheels. All right, come to this side here. We, we've got so many cameras surrounded on this position. And we've got the flash door handles. Of course, you've got the auto soft close door as well. We don't need to shut it down by too much force. And the body size of this L8 is not much different with the Auto 1, but it's longer and higher than the Auto 1. The length of this car is 5,080 millimeter. The wheelbase comes to 3 meters wheelbase and the height is 1.8 meters which is the same as the Auto L9. This car is a little bit longer than the X1 G9 and the Neo ES7. It pretty much has the similar size with the BMW X5 Li version but the price is much cheaper than BMW X5. We don't know the selling price of this L8 at the moment. But I think it will be similar selling price points as the Li Auto 1, around $50,000. All right guys, let's talk about the rare parts of this L8. The difference with uh, the Auto L9 is this part, the number plate position, the Li Auto L8, they put on this position. But the L9 is on this position. And also, you've got uh, this like uh, the hidden rear wipers over here. That's very good design, I like it. Which makes it uh, look more clean and tidy. So the way we're going to open the trunk, either we can press this button here, or we can do like this way. Of course, we need to hold the car key on our hands. All right, the, let's check the trunk space. 
dips uh, is of around 511 millimeter, uh, which is definitely uh, longer and better than the Li One 500 millimeter. And uh, surprisingly, it's even like longer, deeper than the BMW X7, which is around 456 millimeter. So we today got the 20 inch luxury here, like this. So probably we can fit in like a, a 224 inch the luxury over here. Yeah, that's pretty decent performance. Of course, we will be able to fold down the several seats. Yeah, the way we're going to fold down is we just press the button here and then it's automatically fold down the several seats. Another very good feature of uh, the AS suspension is here. There is a button here, same as the Auto L9. We just press this button, and uh, this mode is called Easy Loading Mode. The suspension is actually lowering the position. Yeah, you guys see that? Now we got a very lower rear part, so we will be able to easily carry the big stuff like this. Yeah, that's good. And also it's good seating position, isn't it? We can to this side. As you guys can see, the rear part actually is on lower position. Like this, it's, it's less than one feet, maybe three, two, only two fingers. That's pretty low position of the air suspension for this mode. All right, guys, down below this part, we've got some uh, emergency kit and also this part, we can put in some documents. And also this side, we got this the reverse power adopter. So this one's quite friendly for like outings or campings. We can just easily plug into this spot here. And then you got a 3,300 kilowatt power output. All right guys, let's check the interior here. I don't even feel too much surprise here as the L9 give us too much surprise. So the interior design pretty much uh, similar with uh, the L9. So we've got uh, these very unique steering wheel parts here. So this side, we got a little mini LED screen over here. So that one is the driver interaction screen. You've got like uh, a display of the range and the fuel consumption and uh, the driving mode here. That's uh, good. And also right on the front, you've got the head up display as well. For the center infotainment screen, you've got 15.7 LCD 3K display. That's the difference with the Auto L9. L9 is a 3K OLED display. But as we can see here, it seems not much difference. It's quite good. The Japanese, the color performance is pretty good. For the entertainment system over here, Today we have uh, the high-end version, the max version. So it is equipped uh, a two Snapdragon A155 chips and with crazy 24 gigabyte RAM and 256 gigabyte ROM, which is the same as the Li Auto L9. So the system is quite responsive. And any issues, let's see, you guys see that? And the car here, and we got some navigation. So that's pretty quick. We just put in a jazz. And then hit the start button. Yeah, that's pretty quick. Yeah, that's pretty quick. No any issues with the operation and the music here. And we got these apps and we've got like uh, um, the video apps and the music apps and also the karaoke apps here. Yeah, and all the adjustments here is similar with the L9. So I won't talk too much. You guys can check my previous uh, the Auto L9 review video. Yeah, and then you've got all these shortcuts that control like ventilation, the heat. But speaking of the seats, all the seats are Napa leather seats, quite comfy. Six seats come with a heating function. And the second or the first row came with the ventilation as well. So this part here, we've got 15 watts, the wireless charging pads, the two wireless charging pads. Yeah, and uh, you've got two cup holders here and uh, more storage than below this part. And the center console parts, you've got like one Type C port and a normal USB port for recording, probably. Yeah, and uh, we've got a second layer here. The deepest looks alright. All the Napa leather seats feel quite comfy, and it's quite large as well. 
Yeah, all the touch fittings are quite nice. I like it. And especially I like this the cushion over here. That's quite a relaxing thing if we're driving on the long distance. Yeah, the lumbar support feels all right, feels good. It's supportive and yeah, that's good. There are 21 speakers equipped on this Max version. It could produce 1920 watts at the power output. It seems a little bit less in the specification than uh, the, the Auto L9, but in reality, it seems pretty good, pretty uh, good feelings of the sound system. All right, guys, here on the second row of the Li Auto L8, there is a loop screen as well. It supports the gesture control as well. We can do like this, like this. We can move this side or that side. For example, if we want to watch this one, we do like this. Of course, we can control like this. Or like this. Or like this, like this, like this. That's pretty good. And also we can control the volume up from down. The sitting position, we adjust on this position. And then we probably have one, maybe nearly two feet room over here, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, that's good. The another very distinctive difference of uh, this L8 and the L9 is the table, the seat table. There is no seat table anymore here, and also there is no leg support and a full rest here. And uh, down below this part, there is no any mini fridge here on the L8. Right on this part, we've got this 220 volt the power socket over here. It supports like. 1100 kilowatt the power output yeah all right so now we just put on this position and then we go to the set rope it's only three meters wheelbase but the third row seats several space are quite impressive like this we're sitting on this position and we still have like nearly one feet room over here and for my head part is like um, probably less than one feet room but the good thing is we can adjust the angles here like this so now we probably have better the sitting position and the, the headroom space yeah that's good for my leg part there is not much leg support but the good thing is we can stretch our leg of this position actually the pathway is also quite wide it's quite a decent space over here and then now we probably have a better sitting position for a family suv such big size the interior space definitely we have this double base mode actually we can like take off the head rest here and then we can fold the front seat down of course we can do like both side on the driver side or passenger side then we do like this pretty much you have this uh, single bed over here and uh, there was an uh, official the package of the uh, air mattress which could make it like a double bed so that's quite friendly for families like outings all right guys now the single bed is ready i'm gonna to try it wow so soft wow that's pretty good and you've got very large screen over there and you can just watch the movie or uh, videos over here and uh, and turn on the massage function here yeah, this one got the massage function, both as first and the second row seats. That's pretty nice. I like it. The product line of the Auto seems getting more clear. There are more models coming up soon. The L stands for the Extended Range Technology SUV. So I'm guessing there is a, must be another series in the plan. Stands for the purely electric driven electric SUV. Then the L7, the large 5 seats luxury SUV, and uh, the mid size SUV L6 are coming soon. They are lining up for launch pretty soon, I think, uh, probably maybe next year. This car, the LA, is probably going to be the hot sale in the luxury family SUV market. As all the high tech things equipped on the Auto L9, pretty much is equipped on this car as well. So uh, not everyone likes to drive the full-size SUV on the road. So this car with a smaller size, but pretty much has very good specifications and uh, with more flexible driving experiences and uh, 
a good experience of the parking, more flexible on the city driving. So this car could be a hot sale in the family SUV markets, same as the Li One. All right, what do you guys think? You guys have any thoughts? Please leave your comment below. Well, we will share with you guys more details about the dynamic performance when a test drive is ready. And thanks for watching today's video.